right, welcome to another Friday night episode of Keto Rocks. We are your host, the threesome, Jim Hobbs. To my left or right, I don't know where he's at, is Brian Davis Forsyth of Kicks. And uh, somewhere on the screen is Dr. Steve O, <laughs> the poster child of keto and carnivore. <laughs> I've been doing calisthenics all day, just getting ready for this, Jim. I, whew, I'm ready to rock, baby. That is awesome. And I know we got a lot of uh, emails coming in for people placing their early poster orders of Dr. Steve-O and the tasteful tie-wearing 17-pound uh, brisket holding poster that uh, we announced last week. So we got a lot of people lining up for you there, Dr. Steve. I recommend pre-ordering because there's going to be a shortage at some point, Jim. And I don't mean on the poster, if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> well we'll see how your poster sales go before we for brian and i uh, do ours so we'll we'll see we'll, we'll track poster sales but on a, on a serious note um i did receive a text message from one of our uh, watchers so i want to give a shout out to i will find her name here in a second it's uh cheryl from houston I think wow. I have sent you a couple of emails from uh, from her before, but she actually sent me a text message and she sent me pictures and she just wanted to say that she really loves the show and that she's been doing the keto carnivore diet and for the last couple of months doing it really, really hard. And now her clothes are uh, falling off and uh, she's been doing it for three months. And so much like you, Brian, for 25 years, she says, I didn't eat any bacon, beef or eggs. And she felt a little odd, like in the store when she starts to order porterhouse steaks that people are like looking at her like, why is she buying porterhouse steaks? And she actually said, she, I kind of feel like Brian, to relate to Brian, like I feel like the world's watching me buying meat when I haven't bought it in 25 years. So, <laughs> so Cheryl, you keep buying that meat. It's okay. Yeah. So one of the goals of this show, if I'm doing the math correctly, Jim, is to get people's clothes to fall off. Is, is that correct? Well, that is the uh, purpose of uh, your old clothes. The purpose is to get you a newer clothes, um, not necessary for them to fall off, but so you can go out and purchase a new wardrobe. Okay. The only right. thing, so I can be perfectly clear, I, I'll let Brian uh, go ahead if he <laughs> wants to uh, explain that in uh, deeper detail. Love I can't coat. wait. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I want to go there. Yeah. <laughs> Smart man, Brian. <laughs> I did want to, I don't know if you've got an agenda today, Jim, but I wanted to mention or ask Brian about this. Brian feels put on the spot again, and he's wondering what's going to come out of my mouth. But uh, <laughs> Brian got like a dinosaur egg. And I don't know if it was today or yesterday that you put, oh, he's going to get it. This thing blew my freaking mind, man. Did it's, you see that picture, Jim? I did. It's, it's in the Guinness Book of the World Record. It's the world's largest Easter egg. That's oh, amazing. It's an, oh, my gosh. It's, it's like an apple. It looks like it's uh, petrified. It's hard. It, it's like a rock. And that's an I, I, emu or an ostrich? Emu. Emu. emu wow, emu. that's wild. Yeah. But Have you I, the thing with this is, uh, I I'm I so want to see how big the yolk is, but I'd have to break the shell to 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 get the yolk out intact. Otherwise, I could just drill a hole and and blow it out and then blow just it scramble it, and I could save this cool shell. But I don't know. I haven't decided that yet. Now, how much is it? How much is an egg of that size? How much? What? Like cost wise, like if someone wanted to go buy one, I mean, is that? I think, I think Whole Foods sells them for like twenty nine ninety five or something. You know, they. Oh. But that's Whole Foods, so that's top dollar. <laughs> <laughs> so Walmart has them for two fifty. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> but I have a friend. My friend that sent that to me is uh. Well, it's is um. Billy from uh, Delaware, he sent that to me, and he, uh, I guess his neighbor ha has uh, emus, so they have plenty of those eggs, so they just give them to him. So they ship, he mailed that egg across, I mean, from Maryland? Yeah, in a box, yeah. 
I mean, it's not, pretty solid. Yeah, they're so sturdy. It came UPS, and and I I heard them <laughs> plunk it onto the porch out there. <laughs> they just threw it out. They just threw it out there. It's like like a Kareem Abdul-Jabbar with the sky hook. <laughs> Lands on the porch. It's already scrambled. You don't need to do anything but break it open and cook it, Brian. Yeah, you might be right. <laughs> well, he'll have to care for the brontosaurus that's inside then, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I I saw that briefly. I saw that post. I'm like, I've never seen an egg that color, for, I mean, other than an Easter egg. And then to see it that size, I it really did take me back to bedrock. Yeah, that's beautiful. <laughs> Well, I well when uh, Billy had posted hit an egg that he had. Well, he I think he scrambled them. I, I forget. I forget what the picture looked like. But he had the shell, and he just took a picture of it with no explanation. And I'm like, well, what is that? It's like I, I couldn't tell what it was because of the color and all that. It looked like I couldn't tell if it was a dish. I couldn't tell that it was it, it was round. It looked like just like a. You know, it was like I just never could figure out what I was looking at, and then I realized, oh, that's an egg. Now, so, how how often do these emus produce? Are they like chickens and ducks? Are they are they like daily laying eggs? I mean, that's humongous. Do you know? I, know. I did see a picture of one because I googled it, of course. <laughs> but I saw a picture of one, and there was like a little pile of eggs there. So they must huh. lay like you know what other poultry. Have oh. you ever eaten an emu egg before? No, this will be the first. Did Billy tell you? Do they taste like? Chicken eggs? Um, well, I've watched a few uh, YouTube videos on it where people will dem you know, they'll crack them open and try them, and um, it sounds like they like most eggs taste the same. They don't. There's not very much difference. It's just some are creamier, and they said I I'm a, I'm suspecting because the biggest egg I've had so far is a goose egg, and it seems like the bigger they get, the the diff the the white part is is more different. The yolk is pretty much the same. It may be thicker, but uh, the white part of like a duck egg is different than a chicken egg. It's almost, um, I don't even know how to d describe it. A chicken egg is more like opaque, I guess. And the, the bigger they get, it seems like they get more translucent, kind of. Like oh. after they're cooked, you can almost still see through them a little bit. That's the only way I can describe it. It's just a little bit different consistency with the white. First of all, I don't mean to go off topic, but Jim, did you know that Brian had the words opaque and translucent in his vocabulary? I actually did. Those are $20 words. Those are nice. He used them correctly, too. That was awesome. Listen, he's, uh -huh. a, listen, he's got a ton of those words in his vocabulary. That's why he's wearing the PhD shirt. Oh, I see that. I come from a artistic background so those are kind of like art words kind of <laughs> opaque really yeah 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 oh okay. scribe things yeah <laughs> i sometimes say my wife is so white she's almost translucent <laughs> like uh, she doesn't tan very easily so she's got that real alabaster another 20 dollar word white skin but yeah. uh yeah i i would be curious when you are you going to eat the egg yeah, yeah, I'm. I'm still. I'm not in a hurry to eat it because it, it'll. In fact, you don't even have to refrigerate those things. You can just let them set out. Same with duck eggs or anything that's like freshly laid. As long as you don't wash the shells, you can just let them sit out on the on the counter. You don't even have to refrigerate them. So I've got plenty of time, and that shell is so thick. I'm sure those eggs last a while. Yeah, they're, hmm. they're going for twenty nine ninety nine an egg now, but you know Brian's thinking next week they could be going up as high as thirty five, thirty nine dollars, and then he may sell it on uh, on eBay. This is his cool. retirement plan, Jim. He will <laughs> autograph it, of course. Yeah, that adds five bucks. <laughs> that might look good, an autograph on it. <laughs> Ooh, with a silver or a gold Ooh, there sharpie. You go. yeah. There you go, Brian. Brian damaged Easter eggs. There you go. Sign right there. Ooh, yeah. there's a market Brian, for that. We got to buy an emu. <laughs> you, you've got the yard. You've got the property. You can you can fence it off. You can have one. You think it'll get along with a deer? <laughs> it's a fight I would not miss. That's for sure. <laughs> you can be the play-by-play -play announcer, Steve. I'll do it. I'll be Howard Cosell. <laughs> and the emo is the emu is coming out from the corner of the uh, grassy knoll, and then we'll the do deer. <laughs> the grassy knoll. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking a rope-a-dope off that like uh, chicken wire fence that Brian would put up. 
<laughs> so Steve, talk about let's let's switch gears a little bit. Let's talk yep. about how your uh, play by play uh, is going. I know is, is it the Memphis Kings? What is what's the name of the team? Music City. I'm in the Music middle City. of the state. Memphis Music is off City to the Kings. left. Yeah, it was good. We were up in Louisville this weekend, and the team won by one point, so it was very exciting. And it uh, looks like we've got the inside track on getting a six foot ten athletic guy. So that is going to elevate the team possibly to the best in the country. And it's going to be a good year. It's going to be a good run. And uh, the best decision they ever made, Jim, was to hire me as the play by play guy. Well, I brought a certain charm. And now I the saw, team. I actually went online and saw a little bit of your, I watched a little bit of your broadcasting, like saying number 11's passing to the number one, one's passing at the two, two's going to the three. And then they finally gave you the uh, the uh, roster, so you know exactly who's wearing jersey one, two, and three at halftime. I never get the opposition's roster though, so I just have to kind of make up stuff for the other team. But I definitely shout out my guys' names, and they all want me to call them by their nicknames. And I'm like, if a scout is watching, I want them to hear your name, like not your nickname. Right. But now, it's a lot of fun. Now, and, uh, I was saying to somebody that the ultimate compliment is when somebody comes up to me after the game and repeats me to me or quotes me. Do you remember when you said this? And then they'll start laughing like they remember that those little one liners stick in their head and they want to come and tell me that they love that line. That's the ultimate compliment. When they when they call a timeout, are the reps coming over just to hear your jokes? Because I see them congregate over by the uh, the table. Yes. Yes. Uh, the refs in that league, most of the refs know me. And so they'll come over and they all, most of them have a sense of humor. They're getting 60 bucks to be there or something. And it's not rocket science. So they have as much fun as they can. And uh, they, I'm always loose on the side. So the refs are always kind of talking smack and it, it's a fun atmosphere. Now, are those guys, are they part of, is that league licensed or, or sanctioned by the NBA? No. The league is full of guys who, if you take the best guy from your pickup game at the Y, that is the whole league is full of those guys. So they're not near the level that you're talking about. Most of them didn't go to college, even like a D2 or a D3, but they're, it's a, the, the, the standard of play is much higher than like men's league, but it's not near like what a D1 or D2 college would look like. But do they get paid? I mean, they're getting compensated to play. And how many do they play like tw two games a week or like is it like minor, minor league baseball or getting like 25 bucks a game to suit up? Some of the players get paid. <laughs> Some of them get paid. And uh, that's probably all I need to say about that. All right. We will leave it. We will leave it at that. So what uh, what projects have you guys been working on this week? I'll tell you about mine, but I'll let you guys go first. What uh, any cooking projects you've been working on? Who are you asking? Both of you. <laughs> you can't just throw it open to the floor. Brian and I are like in a fight in the parking lot over who gets to go first. <laughs> well, Brian, what do you work? I know you. I saw the picture of your. Let's see, what did you? What did you post? Uh, you posted a, an omelet today. Was it an omelet you worked on? Uh, scramble. Scramble. Yes. What, yeah, what? it was. It was an off day today because I. Uh, I wrenched my back yesterday doing deadlifts. <laughs> ah. <laughs> And, that uh, is so macho of a thing to say, Brian. Well, he was picking up the emu egg off the porch. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, so I, I, I wrenched my back doing some deadlifts. <laughs> so I had to do. I had to take a day off. So that. <laughs> so my days off, I always eat fish. <laughs> So um, I made Tim, I was overhauling a transmission the other day. I call it a tranny, and. Uh, <laughs> And in reality, the security cameras, the ring camera shows us that he's picking up the emu egg off the uh, front porch. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He actually what? threw out his back. Yeah. So, Steve, what, uh, what, did, what did Mrs. Steve cook for you this week? We had uh, bacon and eggs tonight, so that was nice. And I cooked insofar as I sprinkled the cheese over the top of my eggs. So I was very pleased with I, – I know. I know. You – Come on, it's getting embarrassing now. 
What but I will say on the key, on the um, weight loss keto front, I've been gaining weight this last couple of weeks and it's been very confusing to me. So I almost blame this show because as soon as I came on this show and announced I'm doing great, the weight is falling off, all of a sudden it leveled off and now I'm on the way back up. Hmm. Better buy those posters quickly, folks, because the posters are <laughs> getting bigger. <laughs> Pretty soon it'll take two posters to get all of me in. Yeah. So yes, I, I blame the stress of this show and all the preparation that I do and all of the laborious work and the, the anxiety. It just, it made, I, I ate like a coffee cake this afternoon. Well, in all seriousness, have you ever read this book, Brian? I don't, I don't know if I brought this up before or not. No. So Dr. Ted Naiman, um, he wrote a book. It's, it's really, really good. I'll, I'll, I'll just, I'll post, I'll post it on the, uh, but he, he talks about that uh, when you first go, that's my phone. Oh, um, when you go, when, when people basically go keto, um, you know, of course the weight falls off and that's normally the, the progression, the weight falls off. But then when your body's getting to its natural weight, that's the hardest to lose like the last five to 10 pounds is, is to lose that weight. And that's when he says, you got to start making some changes. And Brian, I think we, I don't know if we talked about this on the air or off the air, but you know, you got to start trimming down the fat portions of the meat that you're eating. Then you got to start to limit the fat intake to help you get to that natural well, weight. That, that, and, and also um, sometimes dairy will, will keep you keep like the, you know, retain the fluids. Right. So he talks about cheese. So you're going to have to start eliminating the cheeses and, and, and the whipping cream and all this. Yeah. Plug your ear, Steve. And, uh, but he says, you know, these, are the, he has this formula um, and I'll, I'll go more into it as, as I get deeper into the book, but the formula of energy versus the carb intake and, and, and fat intake and that perfect balance. So you're able to get to where your body should be naturally. Um, and so, Yes, you can, you know, when you first go keto, it's, it's easy. The first, you know, it, the, the, the pounds fall off, you feel better, but then you kind of hit plateaus throughout that whole process. But at the very end, when you're, you know, trying to lose those last five to 10 pounds, that's when you got to even get serious in regards to exercising and trimming your fat intake or reducing your fat intake. Now, I, I, I don't remember if I asked you this, do you, you do intermittent fasting at all? I do. Yes. No, I mean, Steve. Oh, oh, <laughs> what I don't, uh, is that like you got to wait 16 hours between meals kind of thing? Yes. Yeah. Or, or, or yeah, somewhere around that. Yeah. You, do you do any of that? Not purposefully. <laughs> Cause, uh, that will <laughs> actually also get you over the hump too. Like if you're stalled out, if you incorporate the intermittent fasting into your, your, your routine, That'll that'll kick it back in again, and you'll start to it, you'll start to see a, a difference. All right, I just it's the last pesky fifty pounds that I'm just having trouble with, Jim. So, but the other uh, wrinkle that may come into play, I started lifting weights, so I don't know if uh, I don't know how fast muscle builds or how much it could possibly weigh, but it was suspicious that I stopped like uh, losing without trying. Well. Another thing is too, I mean, sometimes it, they, they talk about not going by your actual weight, but just your size. Does it, does it like your waist seem smaller? I mean, is it, that's still shrinking at all? Waistline shrinks too slowly to notice. Like, uh, I, I don't know that after two or three weeks, I would have any gauge for that, Brian. Yeah, that's true. Well, yeah, they do talk about that, like the way your clothes fit, like sometimes somebody will keep looking at the scale and going, how come it's not moving, but their clothes are starting to fit looser and, you know, that whole clothes falling off thing. <laughs> yeah, nothing's falling off yet. No. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, uh, I started, I, I tore my rotator cuff or I think the proper medical terminology was frozen shoulder. So I had on my right shoulder first and then the last year was my left shoulder. So I had to stop kind of all the exercising that I was doing. And, and I, I like to row on the, on the erg and, and, and uh, do push-ups and sit-ups and the push-ups I had to stop. I haven't done push-ups, but 
two months, so I guess, no, two weeks ago, I've started to um, incorporate doing those exercises again, but I've given myself some resting periods because I, 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 one night I definitely went too hard on it, felt that little twinge and backed off a couple of days. But I noticed that when I start to do the exercising, like Brian was saying, you know, you, you, you start to put muscle back on and muscles, of course, weighs heavier than fat. And so even though, as Brian's saying, now I can notice that my pants are, are looser, my weight's still staying pretty much the same, but I know that I'm actually reducing the fat um, percentage of my body. So I know I'm going in the right direction. Well, <clears throat> I guess I'll just keep tabs on it, but I thought it was an interesting talking point because I'm probably not the only one that's had this happen. No, no. Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of like a, you know, like a plateau. You kind of get to a spot and you sort of hang out there for a while and then it'll start moving again. Sort of like the reverse of cooking a brisket. <laughs> <laughs> Where it's nothing but plateau. <laughs> it's like Bitcoin. It goes down to 47,000 and it goes back up to 55,000, drops back to 47 and goes back up. So this is uh you're in a whole nother tax bracket from brian and i jim so i'll take your word for it i don't think so but anyway talking about uh, a whole nother bracket did we get any confirmation on kick shows brian are you guys going to be good to go april 1st um first which april 1st 2021 i hope <laughs> oh that that april 1st <laughs> Is there another one? Am I? Am I? Is there another April first? I... <laughs> no, I was thinking of something else. Sorry, but um, <laughs> you know what? That has not been confirmed. But I, I'm, I'm kind of pretty sure it's going to go because it's on their website. It's announced, and and uh, but the problem is we have two shows that weekend, and we have one the night after, and that one is not even on their their website. So I'm like, I'm trying to get an answer out of Sullivan and he hasn't gotten the confirmation, but, uh, because there, there's the original ticket, a April 18th, 2020. Right. But that one I think is going to happen. It's the other one that I'm not sure of. So I can't book my flights. So I know exactly what's going on. So I'm just like hanging out and flights right now are like $85. I'm like, Oh, come on. Like confirm this so I can book my flight. <laughs> Brian, it's, it, it, on Southwest, it's all refundable. Just buy it. And then if it gets canceled, just cancel your ticket. You've got that money on your account. Yeah, I guess I could. But the thing is, I got to fly into Richmond and then fly out of B BWI and I have to rent a car and it, like this whole thing, you know, like trying to figure out the timing and where I'm going to stay. And it's like if, you know, I can't book a hotel because I don't know how many nights I'm going to need it. And, you know, it's just a. But anyway, I, yeah, I could get the flights, I guess. Brian, you want me to take care of it for you? No, I'm, I've, I'm like, I could be a travel agent, actually. <laughs> okay. You, you offered, Steve. That's I know. Thank you, Jim. Yeah. You offered. Yeah. I would at least pull the trigger. Like, uh, I would get it all booked, and then if we got a change, we got a change. But otherwise, it, it just sort of takes it off your hard drive if you know it's already there. Yeah. Yeah, plus that that would um, guarantee the confirmation coming the day after I book the flights. <laughs> I'll book everything, get it all set up, and then I'll find out, no, nope, that's not happening. I'm like, oh, so I got to go back and change it. But no, it, yeah, I'll probably end up doing that just to get it, get it out of the way. I'll tell you what, just uh, not for nothing, Sullivan was on my show, and uh, that dude if he can't figure out if it's going or not, then nobody can figure out if it's going or not. He gets stuff done. Yeah, yeah, he was on your show. Oh, wow. He hey. said he never does podcasts, but he did mine. Wow. Which I thought was kind of cool. Is that out yet? Yeah, a couple, oh. couple weeks ago it was out. Oh, I didn't even know about it. I have to check that out. <laughs> nah, you, you, I, I think I'm blocked. Didn't we talk about this last week, Brian? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't see any of your posts. Yeah, I know. Well, one of them, the one about the what was it? The steak oh! and ketchup. <laughs> oh, the ketchup. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, you responded to another one. Did you know you responded to another one of mine? Which one? You probably will remember as soon as I say it that uh, 
I said I rescued because I'm a hero, as you know. I rescued some chicken tenders from the dumpster. Oh, oh, yeah, oh yeah. yes. You wrote rescue yourself and throw them back in. <laughs> <laughs> which was gorgeous that was just a great line <laughs> yeah if it has to do with food maybe uh, that catches my eye <laughs> you know what's funny is people think and you probably get this more than i do because you have a bigger following but it's hard to make like a joke online without people thinking you're serious oh, and I know. i'm like do you believe I went into a dumpster and pulled chicken tenders out of a garbage bag? Like, uh, but people, I think they take that for gospel sometimes. It, it's hard to be funny and not think, do I have to explain that this is a joke to everyone who has zero sense? And I'm ta not talking about you, Brian. I know you got it, but it is kind of a thing online that it's, it's hard to just navigate without people that have zero sense of humor trying to ask questions as if you've been serious about what you just wrote. No, I, yeah, I totally get where you're coming from. Like a lot of people, like I'll make a comment and, and it's supposed to be funny and people just think I'm like, they. I, well, I guess because they don't know me. So they just don't realize I'm being funny, you know? But, but why assume first that you're not funny instead of your first assumption is that he's making a joke or a tongue in cheek comment? <laughs> I don't know, because some people, I, it's weird, because I think some people like to, they just see something, they just want to throw their thing on it, you know, they, it's their like, stink. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Jim, I didn't mean to leave you out of that, but no, no, Brian I, is a rock star. No, I, <laughs> I, I was going to tell you that my wife, Peggy and I went on a um, ghost tour in Lexington, Virginia. And the guy has been doing this ghost tour for 25 years. And during this ghost tour, he literally stopped at a trash at a trash bin and opened it up and dug through it and grabbed food and ate it in front of the 20 people that was following him around. So yeah. I kid you not. And and he goes, sorry, everybody, because I had to get a chance to grab dinner tonight. So I, I, I need something to eat to get me through the rest of this. This guy's been doing this ghost tour, and if I'm insulting anybody who's been on that ghost tour, because uh, he says he's been doing this for 25 years and that it's the like the most famous ghost tour in the world, and that uh, I can tell you we've been on many ghost tours, so we just love doing that visiting cities is a great way to get great history from that perspective. This was the worst ghost tour we have ever <laughs> been on, and had. Oh. <laughs> and had this guy not realized that we were going to be runners, because at the very beginning, when he got everybody in the circle, he handed Peggy this, uh, this he handed her something and said, at the very end, I'm going to need you to, to, to bring that back. So evidently, he had already spied us as people who were potentially going to leave the pack and, and, and <laughs> run away from this. So Peggy and I, the whole time during this ghost tour, are going, man, just give it to somebody else. Let's just get <laughs> out of here. Uh, but had we not had that, we would have fled. So, but, uh, so when you were saying that, talking about, you know, people really did believe that you go diving in a dumpster. I'm going, yeah, I do believe it. Cause I, wit I witnessed it the night we did the worst ghost tour ever. Well, he must not be getting paid very well. <laughs> he was, uh, <laughs> he was a out of, uh, out of work comedian this did happen last year so i understand the pandemic well, probably could go do a stand-up he could do the he could do the stand <laughs> <laughs> so anyway the reality of it is if you're in lexington uh do the carriage tour but if you wanted to see <laughs> dumpster diving up close then do the ghost tour if hepatitis was a person that's who we're looking at there you go uh, so talking about uh let's talk about the book brian how are we coming along this week <laughs> you knew that was coming <laughs> no i'm not actually i'm not scared to talk about it because i've oh. been working on it <laughs> i'm actually working on it i um it, it's in fact today i worked on it extra long because i didn't have a workout so i took my coffee out on the porch and sat out there and yeah so i'm getting chunks of it out of the way very good 
Yeah. Well, I did have the meeting with the uh, the self-publishing people, and I, I need to talk to you about it, Brian. What the options are, and I I think that might be our best option. But I'll I'll talk you through what we talked about off air. Okay. So let's have a contest. Let's let's everybody pick the date of when. Not you guys. <laughs> you guys are gonna. Brian's got the inside track to this, so he can't participate in this. But the listeners, email us to uh, keto rocks 22 at uh, gmail.com and tell us what date you believe the book will be officially <laughs> launched if somebody named billy wins we know there's some emu eggs that are changing hands under the table well he's i think billy sent you crabs too is he the one that sent you the soft shell crabs yeah he's a supplier he, right. you know, billy, billy's code name for food supplier from maryland <laughs> gotcha all right <laughs> but I asked you, Brian, about your book because I just want to let you, you know, our book actually got printed this week. So I uh, put it on our, uh, so I'll, I'll hold up our book. There's there's our book uh, ah. got, got got printed this week. So if anybody wants a, uh, a digital free copy, you can just go to Facebook and you can, you can uh, print yourself a copy. Or if you want a hard copy, just message us and uh, we'll send you one. What is the, I don't know the book, Jim, give me 30 seconds. And for the people listening who don't know what it is, no, what so is, this is So my wife and I've had a real estate business for 25 years. So it's a book that we put together called, uh, I'll just put it, Selling Secrets You Can't Afford to Miss. Um, so it's, uh, it's, it's just a book on telling you what you can do to get your house prepared. If you, even if you want to sell it yourself, what you can do to get the most money out of it in the market that you're in. So, wow, that's topical and timely. A lot of people selling these days because the the prices are so high they're cashing in we can't even uh, right now in virginia you, you the market the inventory is so low that uh if you wanted to put your house in the market right now you definitely would you get top dollar yeah so but uh got nothing to do with food but real estate rocks too just so you know and, and you know brian's book doesn't build. have anything to do with food either what's that i'm sorry I said Brian's book doesn't have anything to do with food either. Yes. It's a, a nonfiction book though, right? Yes. <laughs> I hope so anyway. Either that or Brian has a vivid imagination. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were hearing the feedback again. No, no, I haven't heard the voice yet. <laughs> What's the voice is telling <laughs> the voice is the vo wait a minute, the voice are telling me to end the show. <laughs> <laughs> no. Hey, I said I was gonna to uh, tell you guys about my cooking project, I did actually, I smoked uh, two racks of ribs yesterday, two for Tuesday. I saw the pictures. And oh my gosh, that may have been my my best rack yet. They came out so flavorful and, and moist and uh, I got a little bit left over. Today I cooked uh, ribeye, smoked ribeyes with a Traeger and a uh, in Korean uh, uh, style uh, barbecue short ribs. Mm. I did those as well. Now I did those... What you, what you got, Brian? Go get it, whatever it is. That's my refrigerator's right here. <laughs> <laughs> Brian has to eat. He hasn't eaten all day, Jim. He was about to pull something out of the garbage can, but thank goodness the refrigerator was there. Now I'm, I'm going to make these, and as soon as they're thawed, I just pulled them out of the freezer. The they're short there. ribs? Yeah, they're the, the wagyu, or wag, wagyu, or however you say that. But uh, I have a whole, I have a stack of these in the freezer downstairs. But I just pull, there's like four of them here. So now, where did you, you get, did you get that from your farm that you go to? Yeah, Tennessee grass fed. If you can see that, I can't get that in the lens. There it is. Let's see it. I see it. Yeah, that's the one up in Clark's, Clarksville or Clarksburg. I forget what that's called. Up there. Ville. Unless you're from there, then it's Vol. Say what? If you're from like a, a different part of the country, it's Clarksville. If you're from there, it's Clarksville. Oh, right, right. Yeah. Like, like Louisville? Louisville. No, you don't say the E. Louisville. Oh, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> Louisville. Yeah. Yeah. Jim's more of a Southerner than you, Brian. Well, he was, I, was, I was born in North Carolina, so I'm a, North, I'm a Tar Heel. Actually, Ooh. Virginia Virginia's got the heaviest southern accent like if you get down near richmond it's like really southern yeah i was down there the day actually that's where i i was uh took a drive to 
what was it charles city is where i was at today <laughs> charles city virginia just uh, off of 64 about i guess 20 miles east of richmond i guess but uh we had we had i don't know what kind of weather you guys had in uh, tennessee but it was like 80 degrees today here in virginia that oh, was nice here too yeah, my my daughter and uh, son-in-law and grandson got up at 6 a.m. this morning and uh, they went for the beach. They hit the beach, so I, they haven't even got back yet, I don't think. So they're they're down at Virginia Beach enjoying themselves, hmm. getting that vitamin D. So one of our restaurants you hear hear me talk about a lot is called Tim's River Shore Restaurant. Uh, for those in the DMV area, you guys are very familiar with it. It's uh, the original one opened up in uh, Cherry Hill, and he's, he's got three others all on water. Um, if, you, if you ever had, you like crabs, uh, blue crabs, Steve? Uh, I like most kinds of crabs. I don't care for soft shell, but uh, the hard shell crabs, I like them all. And having lived in Maryland for two years, a bucket of crabs and a mallet is a great afternoon. Yes. So Tim's is one of the few places you go on the water, beautiful views, all you can eat crabs. And the original crab shack that he started at Tim's River Shore in Cherry Hill in Dumfries, Virginia, has uh, been there for 28 years. Um, I was going to try to get Tim on the show tonight, or at least I'll give him on maybe in the next couple of weeks. But uh, people were up in arms because this uh, huge development came in years ago, and it's a really upscale development. Nothing against the upscale development, but uh, the company that owns the land and the restaurant has refused to renew the lease. Uh, and so you got a bunch of people, I mean, really angry right now that 28 years to taking away their favorite crab spot to go to, especially boaters. I mean, this place brings in hundreds and hundreds of boaters uh, on a Saturday. It's just, it's a, it's like Woodstock on the water and, and so you got right now, there's a huge battle brewing with this, this uh, firm out of, I think they're out of California or New York, who's made a decision to, not to renew the lease. And now you've got a bunch of angry people who live in the area who are taking, the, uh, taking to the streets with their voice to, uh, to come alongside Tim and say, this isn't right. We have to save this landmark. So uh, it's, a huge, it's a huge battle. I say that because... You know, I can't imagine being a boat or not being able to go to Tim's this summer and being able to pull up there. And as you said, Steve, there's no better way to spend the afternoon with a bunch of friends and all you can eat crabs and and a mallet and just, <laughs> you know, so and adult beverages. All you can eat crabs, join the sunshine and to not have that place there after it's been there, it's been a landmark for so many years. It's just, you know, it's, 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 it's really upsetting to a lot of people. So hopefully that will get all resolved. And I just wish Tim and Jamie, and uh, hopefully that will come to be. Hmm. But, so those where are, are you, what you're going to say, Steve? Uh, those are tough situations because it's probably an investment firm in San Francisco somewhere that doesn't care. So no, and you're and that's and that's the, the the bottom line is that's that's how decisions get made is on paper, not by the heart, but but by the pen. So, but you know, it's it's also the impact that a place can have on on a community as whole. I mean, he does so many things. The polar plunge gives back to Special Olympics. He cancer. I mean, all kinds of different community causes does he give back to, and that's it's really a huge huge community family that that meets there on a regular basis. So. I hope that can all get worked out for the best. If not, there's three more um, that we'll just have to gather up at. But uh, if you're ever, you're ever up in the Virginia or return to Maryland, Steve or Brian, you guys have an open invitation to, to give me a call. We will go get all you can eat crabs. Both Brian and I need to get back on the road again to make that happen. Yeah. Well, hopefully that's going to happen soon. Right, Brian? I was going to say. I love crab meat. I'm not a big fan of messing with a crab, though, myself. <laughs> so, Steve, you're being the designated picker. <laughs> uh, that's fine with me. <laughs> there, there's sort of a, there's an art form to it, though. Like, I remember the first time we did it, the waitress kind of showed the trick of how to do it. And once you know the trick, it goes a little more easily. But 
as the adult beverages flow, you get a little more liberal by with using that mallet and uh, it becomes a testosterone fueled frenzy. I, I could picture you probably on your second dozen of crabs, eating them, <laughs> e eating them like your peanuts, shell it all just right into your mouth. And Did that hurt you, Jill, like that? It seems like it was hard for you to get your mind around the fact that I eat the whole shell. No, I do too, by the way, sometimes. I don't do it all the time, but I have no problem in eating the whole shell. So no, I, I, it doesn't throw me at all. I'm actually... I, I, my dog used to do it all the time. My, my old shepherd, Jack, he loved peanuts in the shell. I'm going to take that in the nicest way possible. But uh, that sort of leads into why I don't like soft shell crabs, because that freaks me out to eat the shell. And so I, that's a no bueno for me. Well, if it's fried, you don't, can't really tell. Hmm. I remember the first time I ever had soft shell crab, I didn't know what it was. So I thought it was crab. And I was in a business meeting with a guy who I was trying to impress. And uh, the, the, the waitress brought the sandwich and it was on an open face bun. And it was like a crab, deep fried crab intact, looking at me on the bun. And I remember thinking, oh God, I have to actually choke this thing down in front of the guy or I'm gonna look like a wuss. And so I did, I ate it and it was, it was horrific. What a but cup of face off. <laughs> <laughs> so they can't see you. Yeah, you're not <laughs> helping. Yeah. So what's the, uh, what's, let's, let's, let's go down this road. So what's the, what's the most, is that the, the, the worst food you've ever had to eat, Steve? Oh, oh, no, 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 no. I wouldn't say that's the worst, but wh which road, is that the road you wanted to head down? Yeah, yeah. Let's let's find out. Ask Brian too. I'm gonna I'm gonna find out what what food have you like. I I'm not gonna eat that, but you ate it because of the situation that you happened to be in. Oh, <laughs> um, other than like just weird stuff that people have you try. Like I have a friend on Twitter who lived in China for a while and sent me a crate of like weird Chinese food. So it was like potato chips that were like uh, squid flavored. Like, and I'm not even exaggerating. So there are a bunch of those which were wonky. But as far as like food food goes, I would say uh, liver was the worst thing that I, and I wouldn't, I'm sort of a human garbage can, Jim. I'll eat anything, but I would not. That liver was, uh, it was just not good. <laughs> uh oh, what's Brian coming out now? What you got, uh, Brian? Squid jerky. Oh, wow. And it's got the Chinese writing on it. I got a whole box of stuff for you, Brian. <laughs> Actually, I have a, a Japanese fan that sends me this stuff, but the problem is I can't eat that stuff anymore. It's got something in it and I can't read the ingredients. Well, you can. <laughs> well, that's an old improv exercise. Just make up the language. <laughs> but, but go uh, right to the left. But when I tried to eat it the last time, I, I could tell like, because I'm so, I've been eating so clean. As soon as I ingested some, I felt this wave of something happening. And I'm like, ah, oh, there's something in this stuff. So I had to put it down. That's why so, I put down the liver too. I knew there had to be something in it, like liver. So wait, I missed your liver story because I was getting squid. But uh, did you have to eat it? What what did you say? Yeah, because <laughs> I didn't say why I had to eat it, but. I, I was like 12 or something and I didn't want to lose face and my dad likes liver. Uh, and so he was talking about it and he said, have you ever had it? And I was like, yeah, I like liver too. And so he cooked it up. And as soon as I tried it, I thought this is not going to go well. And uh, I knew I had to eat it. And I did because I didn't want him to think that I didn't like liver. Okay. Actually, I'm actually a big fan of liver, actually. I, I love, love liver and onions. Yeah, liver and onions, I just love. But it's got to be cooked right, because back when my, my mother would cook it, it was horrible. And I didn't like he it. He doesn't mean that, Mrs. Forsyth. He didn't mean that. No, he <laughs> just didn't know how to cook it. And it's like you have to cook it right. Or, or it's, Moms it's, do not cook food wrong, Brian. They never <laughs> cook food wrong. You uh, tasted it badly, but you, she did not cook it wrong. <laughs> and my dad, my dad was always in charge of the grill. So anytime we had steaks, my dad would cook them till they were like shoe leather. And I hated steak because of that. I never knew that I liked it till I cooked it myself and cooked it right. <laughs> and added ketchup. Yeah. You know, you, 
You know, well, actually, ketchup might have helped back then. <laughs> Brian, I'm with you there because my mom and dad believed steak needed to be eaten well done. Like yeah. it had to be, it had to be not only well done, I mean, it had to be burned. If there was any signs of life remaining in it, any red or pink. <laughs> yeah, like curled up on it. the edges. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm with you. It's like it was like eating shoe leather all the time. And everybody, everybody, I heard every, I heard the world always talk about how great steak was and how, and yet we would go out and get steak. So I became programmed that I have to order my steak well done. The first time I and listen to this, here's here's confession moment by Jim. <laughs> I'm even sad. This is even it hurts me to even to admit this, but I remember going to one of the my favorite prime rib places in woodbridge kilroy's and ordering prime rib well done because <laughs> i thought yes because i thought awesome. i know kick me <laughs> off now i thought that's the way we ate food it had to be well done it wasn't until i i branched off onto my own and i i tried medium rare or rare that i was like oh my gosh this taste is amazing. It has flavor. It has flavor. It's soft. It's chewy. I like it. It's not the shoe leather. It's not the tongue from my my boot. It's this is good. <laughs> Baseball glove. Yeah. Yes. So Brian, but you see, but here's the thing: as a child, if you've never tried it that way, and you've been taught by the people who love you, who who you trust, you think they're giving you the best advice in the world, and the reality of it is. They're giving you terrible advice when it comes to how to have your steak or, or prime rib prepared. So I think about all those prime ribs that I wasted. <laughs> and I always want, here's the thing here. You would think at some point, because the server always look at me, you sure you want it? Well done. <laughs> I go, well done. <laughs> they say, who hurt you, son? Who hurt yeah. you? <laughs> I was wondering why child protection services were always coming to the door asking me about where were you last night and did you order prime rib. We had a we had an anonymous tip call in that you ordered prime rib. Well done. And you know you know that's an insult to the chef, right? Yes. When you order it like that. Oh yes. Well, I didn't know it at the time, but you know, both my mom and dad are are, are no longer walking on this earth, so I can you know finally come clean and just say it's their fault. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but I'm with you. I did not know steak tasted good until I had it medium rare. Because if you have it well done, you're not eating steak. You're eating shoe leather. Yeah. Yeah, people think the opposite. They think if it's not cooked, it's going to be chewy and hard to eat. But actually, it's the opposite. It's like the, the more well done it is. The, I remember it as, as a kid, I'd take one bite and I'd sit there for 20 minutes just yeah. like, do it thing you like cow yeah <laughs> and that's how i used to and, and and to even come cleaner i remember being at the table and i could have dessert unless i had everything on my plate and that steak uh, I, I could chew it so i'm sitting there getting the napkin and spitting it you know next thing you know my <laughs> napkin's the size of a baseball glove because it's got all the uh chewed up leather in, in it all at once but man yeah, thank I'd, goodness i'd feed my dog under the table <laughs> There's the book, True Confessions of a, uh, of of a, a, a Child Eater. Yeah, of a foodie. Yeah, there you go. Wow. But I got I got the, a food that I had to try. And it's the same situation where I was with a friend and, and he goes, oh, you got to try this. So I, I, you know, I tried to say, okay, try to be open-minded. It was um, sea urchin. Have you ever had that? No, I have not had sea urchin. At a, at a, at a sushi, sushi restaurant? Yeah. Uh -uh. And it's just, uh, it's like, um. It's wrapped like a seaweed thing about this big and that thick and it's got it's just sea urchin in it. And there's there's no way you can't cut it, you know, because you're you're eating with either your fingers Top or sticks. chopsticks. Yeah. And the only way you can deal with it is just shove it in your mouth like whole. You can't take a bite off it because it just fall apart. Is it spiny like a sea urchin? No, it's like mush. And it's like uh I, I I just put it in my mouth and I'm like uh, it's like my whole mouth was full and I'm just sitting there I just had to gag it down 
like uh, someone blew their nose into your mouth kind of mushy. Oh my God. Well, I'll tell you what it looked like. It looked like a, a disaster in, in a baby's diapers. It was oh. like, it's like a mustard color. <laughs> oh, uh, so. <laughs> So was that I think your, we lost Hobbs. Was that was that your was that your first and last time of eating sea urchin, Brian? I have not tried it since. But you know, it's in like when when we went to Japan, I remember going to this. Uh, it's kind of like a fast food sushi place where they put it on a conveyor belt. Like they they just put plates, and you could just grab the ones you want. So I'd I'd be grabbing all the the, the uh, tuna, salmon, or something. Yeah, all the all the ones that I like, and but the sea urchin like all the business the japanese business guys that were in there for lunch they were just like fighting over the sea urchin that was like their delicacy but i, I was like oh man i don't, I don't even want to get near that <laughs> but huh. I, you know I, maybe it's like I, an aphrodisiac I yeah i don't know i don't know what the deal is with it but i couldn't handle it <laughs> my uh my experience i think i've talked about it on the show before but my experience peggy and i was at a uh at a party at a friend's from, uh, I think she was from Brazil. And we were uh, at her house. It was very dark and it was a very festive atmosphere. And we're down at the table and it was very, I mean, dark. And we were like her host, we were a guest. So she treated us really well. And I'm, they're serving food, it's so dark and I'm starving. And I like, I bit into it. I was like, yeah, this tastes pretty good. And Peggy, like, that's it. she goes, you know what you're eating? I go, no, but I'm kind of liking it. She goes, I, I think it's tongue. And I'm like, you're kidding me. And, uh, and then I realized when it's tasting me as I taste it, that she is correct. So I asked the person who's hosting the party, I said, what is this? And she said, it's, it's, it's tongue. And I, she goes, it's a delicacy for us. And, uh, but it was good. I finished it, but I couldn't get past the mental picture of having two tongues in my mouth. One yeah, being a cow. Your wife's. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> it was the cows. But uh, so I have yeah. These are downstairs as we speak. Now, how do you how do you cook the tongue, Brian? Because she put it in the oven and and slow cooked it for for. She told me how she cooks it because I wanted to know, make sure I didn't do it. Well, I haven't, I bought it and I have not attempted it yet. And I've never done one before. So that's sort of why I haven't gotten to it yet. Cause I haven't really figured out what I'm going to do with it yet. But I hear I a video coming. It's but don't let the, good. don't let the cat get it. Don't worry. I don't think she could lift it. <laughs> it's as heavy as she is. It's huge. I mean, it's like that thick and that long. Is it like a whale tongue? What is it? It's, it's a, a Gene tongue. Simmons. It's a Gene Simmons cow tongue. <laughs> it's, in my, it's in my downstairs freezer. If it was here, I'd grab it for you and show you. Maybe I'll bring it up for next week. <laughs> I would be curious to see it's so, that. It's so big, you got to get its own freezer. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I can All serve. Right. The, I could serve the tongue next to the big uh, emu egg. Ooh. Yes, we'll have uh, a that... Jurassic night at. Forsyth's house. That's a cooking video for you. <laughs> yeah. That might be kind of cool. There you go. Well, I got nothing else left, guys. Anything else that you guys want to share before we wrap it up? We have covered some ground today. I don't know if we've gone circles or we uh, got somewhere, but the uh, only thing I know is it feels like the end. Hmm. Walk <laughs> us out of here, man. <laughs> All right, Steve, you got anything? What do you got going on this week? Got any, got any basketball games you're uh, broadcasting? Uh, we're going to be in Atlanta this weekend, and the one food item is Mrs. Steve took the other part of the cooked brisket out of the freezer, so we'll be eating the other half of that this week. Sounds good. What about you, Brian? Just those, those short ribs I'm going to attempt. Probably not tomorrow because I don't think they're going to be thawed until Friday or Saturday, so one of those two days. Awesome. All right. Well, Brian, I'll let you sign us out of here then. Oh, I don't have my eat, my eat your meat shirt. I got my proper human diet shirt. <laughs> but, <laughs> uh, but that's what I got to say is eat your meat. All right. We'll see you guys yeah. next Friday, everybody. What do you say, Brian? Wait a minute. You had one more thing you wanted to say. I said, what else is there? Besides there's, no, there's nothing else to do. Eat your meat. We'll see you guys <laughs> next Friday, everybody. Stay well. Stay out of the hospital. We'll see you soon. <laughs>